Hi guys, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> I was gone for a while. I was off for a, a few weeks there, and Jules and Joan did a great job last week of showing off the new Boo Boo Loom, which will be super fun um, to, to use. And you know what? I'm, I'm planning a project for that for next week because I just can't stand it. It's so cute, and I have a really cool idea. So make sure you tune in next week to check that out. So my name is Trisha Geizon. I actually am with Pink Poodle Jewelry Studio and I'm here today for Jewel Loom. We're going to have some fun making a project and you want to make sure and share this live for us if you can. Um, always give us a, a thumbs up and a comment. Uh, we always appreciate that very much. And don't forget guys, I also have a YouTube channel and it is uh, Trisha's Pink Poodle Jewelry Studio and check it out. My links are all in the description. We do not have Miss Joan tonight, so if you need a link to a product, it will not be in the chat tonight. It will be underneath the description, so feel free to check that out as always. Um, so that is enough of the housekeeping there, so I hope everyone's doing well today. Um, we had a regular old day here in PA. It was a little dreary and, um, but you know, staying busy with getting ready for the holidays, making gifts, you know, the whole nine yards. I'm sure everyone is doing that now. So let's see who's here with us today. Melanie. Hello. I missed you all too. I missed you all too. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Hermie. Hi, Amber. Greetings from Michigan. Hi, Bonnie. Vaughn, hi, hi. We do have Amber in the um, comments with us tonight, guys, which is to totally awesome. And <clears throat> she will be trying to help with any questions in case I don't see them, because usually the girl, uh, Joan, or whoever's helping me, uh, bring them to my attention, and I can answer them then for you. So if we don't get them during the live, we will certainly... Uh, check back and uh, answer them after. And there's Miss Pava. Hello. Hello. I'm back home. I'm back home. I know. I missed you guys. It was so um, weird not being on. It was just, I felt like something was missing. So um, like I said, guys, don't forget, please share for us tonight if you can, because Miss Joan isn't here to share for us. And we appreciate it if you can just push push this live out, as always. Much appreciated. And there's Miss Vicky. Okay, guys. So without further ado, let's talk about this week's project. This week's project is a very good beginner project. Um, I'm kind of going back to the grassroots of what we all started with. I know that we've been having some new folks uh, joining the uh, group. Lately, I've been seeing them, you know, trying out the loom, doing, you know, some different things, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, I love to see that. I love to see folks um, just going for it. And that's fantastic. So I thought this week we're going to go ahead to, <laughs> sorry, um, this week we're going to go ahead and go back to our grassroots, like I said, and we're going to make a basic bracelet. We're going to use some six millimeter fire polish and some six millimeter tiles and just do a basic project on our original loom. I will show some loops, just some simple loops, things like that. And hopefully for the newbies, this gives you an, a good idea of the steps that you need to do to um, use the loom and enjoy the loom. And for the old folks, that's not old folks, excuse me, girls. The folks that are pros, let's use that. <laughs> For the folks that are pros and have been with us from the beginning, and this is just a refresher course. So let me turn my camera down, guys, and we're going to get started. And you know we're going to get black for just a moment, but I haven't gone anywhere. I'm still here. Okay. Whoops. 
and I have a new camera set up in case you couldn't see um, earlier it was showing there a bit in the shot so um, it's more overhead and you're seeing everything from my angle now which I thought would be a little more beneficial but here is our bracelet that we're going to do this week and this can just this is a, a bit of a statement I think because this is a very simple bracelet, but look at the impact it has because of the beads that we've used in it. So that's something to keep in mind. If you are doing a simple project, you want it to look a little more um, difficult or raise, the, not difficult, but um, kind of make it a little bit more elevated use some pretty beads and some ABs and just different colors and textures with it. Okay. This is before we put the loops on, I want to try something this week. And when we get to the loops, I'll tell you about it. Uh, um, let's go over what we're going to be using tonight. Of course, we have our original jewel, jewel loom here with our bar. Um, we have some as i said some six millimeter fire polish and if that well, look look at that under the lights guys that just makes my heart sing oh my gosh and then i just have some six millimeter tiles and some different colors and textures um my mix is actually here that i'm going to be dipping into the bracelet so i'm going to slide this on over so you can see it a little bit and it has a lot of um different colors of grays in there there's just like a silver there's the opaque silver there's the matte you know it has a matte texture to it or finish not texture boy words are words are hard um <laughs> so anyway guys so i have just taken some of my strands i've cut them apart isn't it pretty vaughn a sparkle i love it i love it but we're gonna need to start with um warping our loom we are going to use uh some 11 o's today um and we're going to put them on the end so we can go ahead and do a um what you call it clasp a slide a slide end on our piece okay so what we're going to do first and I don't know where my other slide end went. Oh, there it is. Okay. Just want to make sure I have everything I need. So what we're going to do first is we're going to warp our loom. <clears throat> and I am using the 0.5 um, hemp. I think I'm actually going to go off my roll just to make sure I have enough. But 0.5 hemp in this gorgeous blue color. The reason that I'm doing the 0.5 is because... I'm going to turn this other light down. Maybe that will help, guys. Um is because that way we can do our single knots at the end and then slide on our clasp. Um, so that'll be for that. So first we're going to start by putting our bar in. And what I do is I just hook it down into the bottom of my loom, just like so. And remember, I'm down here. I know you know that because my hands are going that way, but just in case. And I'm just going to take this piece right here and just put it into my belly just a little bit. And I know you can't see that, but I am doing it. I'm put, I put that against my belly and I'm just going to give the loom just a little flex and pop that bar in. Okay. So now our loom is bowed. Okay. So this is good. We want this to be like this. So we're going to turn this over. Apparently my dogs are having fun downstairs. Can you use s -Lon or other cord? Absolutely, Anissa. Absolutely. Yep, anything that is cording, nine times out of ten, you can use it on the loom in one way or another. So I'm just tying this hemp here onto one of our knobs underneath. Okay, and I'm going to flip this over, but I'm going to take the end that I tied onto and I'm going to lay it, or move that up to the top. And then I'm going to lay in my hemp into a groove. Okay. And I'm just going to keep that taut as I'm pulling that down and lay it into relatively the same groove down there at the bottom. I'm going to wrap around the knob underneath, keeping tension with my thumb, wrapping it up and around. I'm going to skip 
four grooves for this one, guys. For the six millimeter beads, that seemed to work best. So we want to put it in there. Double check my grooves because my eyes cross sometimes. But there's one, two, three, and four. And we're just going to keep that tension on there. And move it on down. And we're going to go one, two, three, and four there. And we're going to do the other knob underneath. We're going to catch that, keeping tension. Up and around. Skip four. Okay. And we're going to keep that tension as we go across. And lay that in. Four grooves wide. And catch our other knob. Okay. And then we're just going to bring that up over the top. Skipping four grooves, one, two, three, four, and pulling that on over to that other side. So we're going to skip our four grooves here, okay? Oops, one extra. And then we're going to wrap this around the knob on the back, the hemp, a few times. I like to do that because then I know that I have a pretty good grip on the loom itself and then i'm going to take this cord and trim it from the spool and you want to leave yourself enough because you want to be able to tie a couple knots so i'm going to slide my um end of my hemp in underneath the warps there and then i'm just gonna tie a knot and i'm keeping tension the whole time there and we're going to pull down Oh, on that knot and you can see there my circle I my knot caught too soon so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to try to tighten this up just by tying those two together hey you know things happen like this to us so let's just tighten that down make sure that our 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 uh, warps aren't going to be sacrificed because of it so I'm just going to do this Keep that around the knob and tie that. You could, of course, try to take the knot out and redo your, but I think we're going to be okay. Redo your warps, but I think by doing that, we're going to be okay. So I'm just tying that again, just making sure everything's nice and snug. So we're pretty good there. So then you want to do opposite of what we did before. We're going to take the bar out. So I'm going to do the same thing and press that into my stomach and flex the uh, loom just slightly up. It's flexible, not bendable, guys. You've heard me say that a hundred times. I'm going to pop that rod up and out and then pull it out of the back. And now you're ready to go. Now we have a really nice taut warp. And that's what you want. That gives you the best finished product. Okay. So I'm going to cut that so that doesn't distract anyone or myself which is more than likely and I did thread my um needle I'm using the wildfire in the 0 0.006 whoops I, I'm used to turning it for you guys there we go <laughs> there we go and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the end of my wildfire that doesn't have the needle I'm just going to tie on to the outside of my warp the furthest left warp I um loom from the bottom up a lot of people do from the top down it's your preference and whatever's comfortable for you okay so i'm just putting a couple knots in that the first thing we need to do is put on some seed beads because we're going to need that for our slide clasp here uh vicky has a tip i always have blue painters tape close by to really stick it down because i'm a flipper okay Okay, that makes sense. So what we're going to do is start with nine seed beads. I'll move these over so you can see those. Okay, and we're just going to pick up nine 11 O's. The, this color is the transparent rainbow black diamond. It is gorgeous and one of my favorites. So pick up nine 11 O's. Okay, three, six, 
and nine. I think we're good there. Just double check. Yes. And we're going to drop those beads down as we always do. And then I'm going to shuttle my needle across underneath. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to hold on to my thread. This is my technique. This is what I've developed to be the most comfortable for me. Okay. And as those beads come up, I'm kind of going to let go of that and then take my hand up underneath and divide the beads up. So I have three beads per row. Okay. So there's one, two, three, six, and nine. So now that I have those divided, I'm going to hold these with my left hand, pushing those beads up. Uh, Anissa, no, there's not a kit, but all of the items can be found in the description. They'll take you right to joeloom.com and you can find beads just like these. I don't have the exact things listed. You go right to, say, the fire polish, but um, these are, you know, the colors I'm using, you can see, are in the royal blue family, silver, gray, black, you know, make your own you know, combination that you really like, you know. So we're going to go up and over through the beads over top of the warps. And we're going to put our needle through there and just pull that needle out the other side. And then we have our first row, which is our lemons. Okay. Easy peasy. So what I like to do is go through this a second time and I go underneath the warps. And the reason is, is I like this to be very solid because this is going to be our row that our bracelet is hooked to. Um, the clasp will be hooked to. So I like to reinforce it a few times. You could even go through three times if you wanted to. Um, but I just go underneath and catch my beads. I'm slightly pushing down on my beads a little bit just to make sure that my needle goes through them. And we're out the other side. And let me just go back across. Okay, now I'm just going to pick up my first row of beads. So I'm going to pick up three six millimeter fire polish and drop those down. And shuttle the needle across underneath and push our fire polish up. And then we're going to go through up and over, through the fire polish, through the beads, and over the warps. That's what we like to say. Make sure you're going through the beads, but over the warps. Because if you don't go over the warps, the beads will become loose or they will fall out. Certain beads will fall out if you don't catch your um, needle through all of them. So we don't want that. So this is a basic, guys. I'm just doing every other row with our fire polish and our uh, tile beads. I'm just going to pick up three of these beautiful silver tile beads and create your own pattern. Create your own bracelet that, that sings to your soul. Um, like I said, you don't even have to use these colors, but I do like the combination of the blue and the blacks, the grays and the silver. And then we're just going to, I caught in that second hole of those tiles. I didn't talk about that. I apologize. So all of my tiles you can see are dangling here. The front hole is open. The back hole has our thread through it. You want to make sure you always do that because you want to go through the same hole and you want it to be either the back or the front if you're going up or coming down and it will be um, okay for you to go ahead and run your uh, needle across and get that hooked in there. 
What size beanie needle do you use when the seed beads are really tiny? The jewel loom needle is sometimes too big for several passes. <laughs> yes, that is true. Um, I actually use a 10 or an 11. If they're really tiny, I'll use a 12. But, uh, oh, Robin, you're fine. Thank you for joining us. We're glad you could be here. Those are usually the ones I go for, depending on how tiny. And I, I'm not one to use like a 15, honestly, guys. I, I've never done it, and I, I really don't have the urge to do it. So as I am uh, getting ready to put my needle through the front of the towel beads, you can see they're tipped down and through there. Okay, you can see that they're hinged. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my finger on my right hand there, and I'm just going to pull that up slightly so I can put my needle through all those holes. You can turn your loom sideways to see better. Um, a lot of people do that. I do that sometimes myself. So we're pulling that thread through, okay, and we're going to go through the beads and over top of the warps. Yeah, as I said, um, like I said, you probably 11 is a good a good size to be the middle of the road for you vicky for tiny seed beads um i think that would work just fine for you and now i'm just going to pick up three more fire polish over here okay these are really cool they have the silver and blue i love them and we're going to continue with the same pattern thank you for putting that into the chat amber i appreciate that all right so we're going to push those up through through the beads and over the warps again okay let's pick up some of these pretty matte black beads how about those Don't worry, I'll get to the AB. You know I will. <laughs> so I'm just going to pick those up again, all on the same side in the same hole. Okay, and we're the same thing as we were earlier. We have the back, the needle through the back hole, and the front is kind of dangling. Whoops! Gets a little wild in here sometimes. So once I drop those down, welcome, Lisa. You're not late. You're never late. What thread did you use for the warp? I used 0.005 um, hemp, actually. You could use whatever you like. And then we're going to tip those up, and I'm going to go through that back hole. I'm going to go through the beads and over the warps. Hi, Jackie. I didn't see you come in. Welcome in. <clears throat> and then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tip the beads there with our finger. We're going to support them with that, that uh, finger on whatever finger you're comfortable with on your right hand. And we're going through the hole underneath the warps. You can see that. Okay. And pulling that across. All right, and then we're just going to go up and over the warps and through the beads there. And we'll just continue this. So I'll pick up, how about a couple of our beautiful black AB beads. Well, maybe not, because we're right there with the black. I don't think I want to put it right against that, because it won't pop as much. So let's pick up a couple 
of this other one that has a really cool almost picasso finish on it but in maybe like a little lighter of a shade but they do definitely look picasso to me this is when i flip it because my left hand is stupid <laughs> Vicky, you crack me up <laughs> So we're just going to push those up and in and the needle through. Okay. And I'm going to look for some of these really pretty AB tile beads now. Grab a couple of those. I want three of those. Okay, Jackie has a question. Supplies are non-existent on the island. I usually travel to the U.S. or back to Canada to buy stuff. I have a ton of sea lawn and some hemp. Can you use sea lawn to warp? Absolutely, 100% you can, Jackie. That would work just fine for you. Okay. Some great questions tonight, guys. Okay, so we're tipping down here. And I'm going to grab those beads and just tip them up slightly and put my needle through. Okay. The, 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 Warping materials you kind of want to stay away from are anything that has like give in it, you know, like a quite, you know, quite a bit of give. And if they, they do have give, say for instance, le leather has some give and it'll stretch out. Um, you can always leave your bar in your original loom or you can just use your wisdom warrior or uh, one of those looms to, to make the same thing because this and the wisdom warrior are, equivalent except for um this one has the bar and, and the wisdom warrior doesn't but just because it doesn't have the bar doesn't make it less than this because it's just as good if not better okay i love them all i love the modules you know i do but i'm just saying you know that gives you an idea on you know how to to use the looms you have you know so we're going to lock those in or want to get it's always fun to buy a new loom, you know. So those are those gorgeous AB beads in there. Oh, my God. No. Okay, now we're going to go to our black because I think they're going to pop off of that AB bead better. Okay. Oh, Jackie, that sounds great. A beach day and looming tomorrow. That sounds fantastic. Okay. And then we'll do some of these shiny gray ones. They're really pretty, too. Okay. And we're just going to keep working up. And then through the holes. Gotta catch that last hole and can be jerky sometimes, especially if you're looking down on it. Okay. 
So let's go back to our, let's see, we've used each one. So let's go back to our really pretty royal blue. to our silver again and I'm just going to repeat this pattern guys it, it's just a simple repeating pattern that we're doing here but you know you can jazz it up any way you'd like I think this would be really pretty for Hanukkah or even New Year's with the pop of silver in it and the AB beads All right, guys, so I think you've got this down. If you don't, you can always go back and watch the replay and see how we put this pattern in. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, okay? So I'm going to set this to the side, and here is the one that I have done. Not done, but as far as the pattern is on the, um, the one we just did. This one has the full length of what I need. I need it six inches. I always make my bead apart six inches because I have a seven inch wrist. So that gives me that inch on either side for um, my clasp. And I just, when I ended guys, I did, um, yes, a row of bugle beads would be interested in is, interesting in this project as well vicky i agree um i just did the nine seed beads across on this one on the ends both ends have it you just do the exact same thing when you come to the end of whatever length you need yes through the magic of the internet um <laughs> you put you know your nine 11 O's, 9 11 O's, because we do need those so what i think i'm gonna do here guys is i think i'm gonna play with an idea for loops normally we would do our loops the whole way and do our loops on or on the top um i'm thinking i wonder what it would look like if we just did loops on our tile beads and kind of it would be like every other row so i'm thinking let's try it why not thank you mary thank you so I'm just going to thread another needle here, guys. I'm just going to take about um, a wingspan for the loops. Usually when I'm beading a bracelet, I take about um, a wingspan and a half to two wingspans to make the base of a bracelet. Yeah, it did come out really nice. I was really pleased with the colors and the bling and all that stuff. You can't go wrong with fire polish and tile beads, really. So just bear with me here as I thread another needle. So I don't know how this is going to look. I hope it'll be cute. But, you know, let's just explore and do some fun stuff, huh? Think outside the box a little bit. So I just threaded my needle there. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my needle and go through this first row of oh, fire polish. If I can get my needle in the hole there. There we go. <laughs> through that first row of fire polish. And I haven't tied on to anything yet. Okay. And I'm just going to pull that through. So later I can weave that back in. I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail there. You know, just enough so I can make sure and weave that back in so we can't see that. Because this knot, the knots on these ends will be covered with our slide clasp. Okay. 
So then we're just going to go into the first row of that tile bead and work our needle across. And that's one of the reasons I really love jewel loom needles because you can see as I'm rocking it there, I mean, you can't go too crazy with it, but it'll allow you to kind of work your needle across through the bead holes. Okay. And I think maybe we'll pick up six seed beads, 11 O's. Six, okay. I'll thank you, Anissa. And then I'm gonna go through the next set of holes on our tile beads, okay? If you want to, guys, you could do it on either side, on both sides, I mean, um, certainly. But I think we're just going to do the one side for now. But you could work, you know, both sides as you're going. So I'm going to go ahead and go back through, go through, not back through, the next row of fire polish and we're just going to repeat this as we move up the bracelet so here i'm going to be going in through the bottom row I'm gonna choke down on my needle a little bit that'll help me have a little bit more control and then work my needle across because we need to get it to a place where we can put our beads in on the side we want just in those two holes of that um Tile bead, okay. All right. And then back through the top hole. So what this is going to enable us to do then, we're coming out that hole, the top hole, and we're going to put on six seed beads at that point to make our little loop. You can certainly make whatever size that you like, guys. Whoops, I hit my mouse here. We don't want to do that. So we're going to pick up six more. And work our way up. Okay. And then through that bottom hole again. All right. There we go. There's another loop. I don't know. We'll just have to see how it turns out, guys. But back through those fire polish. Okay, challenge on. <laughs> Experiment with the design. It might look nice. I cannot work with bugle beads. <laughs> why, why do you seem to have trouble with bugle beads, Anissa? Um, while Roberta ask is wildfire the best choice for beading wire or can you use anything else? Wildfire is the best choice for your stitching. This is your wildfire fire and it's thread and it works. I like it. I think it's the best thing to, uh, weave your projects with, um, as far as beading wire, if you are specifically asking for beading wire, I really like soft flex. Or if you um, are talking about regular wire that, you know, you work with, I would recommend uh, the Beadalon German style wire. So that kind of covers all the bases, I hope, and answers your question. Okay. So we're just going to go back through that. Whoops. Back through that those tile beads and around. Yeah, I think it's cute. I mean, it's not it's not over the top, which is out of my character, but you know, for just a simple look, sure. Just hard to find patterns that I can understand. Oh. Well, you know, we're always here to answer questions for you, Anissa. Don't hesitate to reach out in the group, and we will be happy to help you for 
five and six. And if you have not um, joined the a jewel loom group yet, is jewelry making with a jewel loom. You definitely want to do that. It's a great place to ask questions, to post your finished pieces. Um, it's just a great group of people in there. So if you haven't done that, make sure you do. And then I'm just going to go back through and through the fire polish. And we'll continue working on this for a few more minutes for a little bit. Just to make sure everybody has the groove of it. Okay. And if you missed it, guys, I'm, for next week, I'm going to do a fun project on the Boo Boo Loom. If you have not seen that yet, you do need to check it out. It's Jewel's newest loom, and it is absolutely adorable. And I think it's going to be really fun to do some great projects on. Okay, so Roberta says, sorry, poor choice of words. I guess like I have some stretchy cord that I have no idea who made, as well as some soft flex eating wire, not thinking of using 26 or 28 gauge wire. Um, let's see here. I would say so if you're looking for... Um, like I said, if you're looking for something to sew in your beads, wildfire. If you're looking for something to string your beads on, you know. Um, and then you said you have some soft flex. But, you know, just like that is what I would use. And you know the wire. So I hope that answered what I said. But it's a, a little confusing for me because, you know, words are hard for me. It's not you, my dear, I'm sure, but I'll look at that question again afterward, or maybe Amber can um, uh, an answer if she understands better. Okay, so I'm picking up six more. Roberta, oh good, I'm glad, I'm glad, because that worries me when people, people don't understand or I'm not being clear enough is usually what the problem is. Um, so Robin asks, what thread or wire are you using? I got here late. Um, as far as the base of this project, I use 0.05 hemp. And for my stitching of my beads, I'm using black wildfire and 0.006. Okay, I'm just going to try to finagle this through because it can get a little tight in there. When you're running through your beads multiple times. You like the edges, Anissa? Yeah. Hey. Live a little, right? Has anyone had a chance to check out the new Boo Boo Loom? I've just started playing with it. I've had it for a little while, but um, I think I'm going to enjoy it. All right, and back through. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Thank you, Robin. Hey, you know, some people don't like over the top. This would be something just... Simple, but elegant, you know. I've never done it where I've skipped. And I wasn't sure if it would look weird. But I think it's going to be okay. And that would give you an opportunity to put something else in, in the middle. Sorry, I was off the screen there. In the middle here. I don't know what. But I'm sure all of your brains could figure something fun out to do. There. Let's do one more loop, and then I'm going to show you how to remove this off the loom and put your tie your knots and put your ends on. Oh, Donnie, don't ever say you're sorry for being late. No one has to. I mean, we're here. 
we're here and this will always be in replay and you can always reach us in the group if you have any questions or place them in the live chat and we will get them afterward no problem okay two three And thank you everyone for sharing out the live for us tonight. As I said, we are Joanless tonight, so um, I appreciate the extra help for sure. Okay, if you have not subscribed to, subscribe to Juloom YouTube channel, that is where all of these um, we, they live basically, they'll be on Facebook, but eventually, you know, they'll move down and it'll be harder to find, but the Jewel Loom YouTube channel has every week's, um, lives on there too, guys. So make sure you're subscribed over there. Okay. And I think that's where we're going to call it for now. I'm just going to do... A knot here so then I can go back at a later time if I want to continue putting my loops in so actually I took my needle off but I don't want to do that I want to keep my needle on because I'm going to weave back through my thread so it's more in the middle okay so I'm going to go in to I'm in this row here let me do my loop and then we can move into that fire polish let's do it That'll be a little easier on me. Okay. Let's just do that one. And then drop back through. And then we're going to go right into that fire polish like we did before. But I'm only going to go through the first bead and I'm going to angle my needle up just like so. If you can see that, I know it's hard to see, but I'm angling it up and out of that bead there, that first fire polish. And then I'm simply just going to tie a couple knots on this warp between the first and the second bead. I'm just going to go underneath with my needle. And through the loop, make sure I'm doing the right way, and then pull. And I'm going to tighten that down there. And then I'm going to do one more knot. And see, the same thing is trying to happen like it did when we first started our project where the knots catch sooner than you like there we go i got it and so i'm just going to send my needle down underneath again and then i'm just going to give that a little tug i'm going to pull it right between those beads and just give a little tug so that knot now will drop to the bottom Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with this other thread that we started to do our loops, okay? And guys, I do want to let you know um, starting in our first live in January, we are actually going to start changing our time that we go live. We are going to start going live at 3 p.m. Eastern every Thursday. I hope that still works out for everyone. I hope so. Anyway, um, we're going to give it a try and see how it goes. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. And I will keep uh, let it keep reminding you, and I will also make sure I put posts in the group and things like that. But we're going to go ahead and try an earlier time. 
no reason other than um, just to kind of do it during the day. Because it's usually um, seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock here, Eastern, whenever I do it. And I don't finish up till after eight. And then by the time we, it's like 830. So we're going to give it a go. So first we get loopy. Then we get naughty. Santa Paws is going to make note of that. <laughs> okay, guys. So we weaved our threads back in. Now what we have to do is take our project off the loom. And I have this end into my belly again and I'm just going to give it a slight bend actually I'm going to cut it on this end because these are the ones we tied off my loops I may just pull back in okay after Danielle has showed us that trick and then I'm just going to cut my loops I'm supporting my work under here like this and I'm supporting my loom with my thumb and my index finger I know it's hard to see because the angle but and then I'm just going to pull that off. And the reason I didn't cut it on the side with the loops is what I was saying is um, Danielle opened our eyes up one day and said, um, you know, you can try pulling the loops down into the work. You just have to be very careful. Um, just making sure you're supporting your work as you're doing it. I'm just going to grab, I know it's hard to see. I'm just going to grab one of these threads here and see if this is the one that I need to be pulling. Let me try the other one. Yeah. So one will come easily and one will kind of be more stiff. But as I'm doing this, guys, I'm going slow and meticulous. I'm pulling, but I'm keeping all of my work supported and just pulling that loop. You can see how it's coming down there. And it's going to go against that way you only have knots that you have to deal with on one end how do i dispose of my needles hmm you're talking to the wrong lady <laughs> if you would see the amount of bent out of crazy needles that i have in my stash I, the only time i've ever thrown one away is if they break which and usually what my husband has me do is poke it into like cardboard or something like that so that it's less likely to harm somebody so I usually just kind of put it through the cardboard or if you have styrofoam or something like that that way then you know there's less chance of somebody hurting themselves on it plastic container with blue tape there you go there's a good one so we're just going to pull this thread supporting our work i'm gonna try this one it might be easier yes it is and i'm just slowly doing this pulling these down this is the best trick in the world i just love this but just be very careful i'm keeping a good bit of pressure down on my work and i'm moving slowly and meticulously okay so now that those are pulled down i want to make sure they're snug in there and, but not too tight because I don't want to um, work my work. So let me just make sure everybody's good. Looks like everybody's good. That everyone stayed straight. It is a great idea. I can't take credit for it, though. That was Miss Danielle. So all I'm going to do now, guys, is just tie some single knots here on the end. And I've shown you this before, but we're going to do, like I said, we're doing a refresher this week. And this was something I found by using the 0.5 hemp. If I did the single knot and made sure it was really a snug knot and made sure that it was glued thoroughly, it would work for me to put a slide clasp over top of it. <laughs> Jody. Jody says your tips are awesome. I'm writing them down so I can remember them. Well, thank you, Jody. I appreciate that. I think you all need to go talk to my husband. Tell him how smart I am, right? <laughs> he just gives me a hard time, you know, typical guy. There we go. Get that one done. Okay, and I'm just making sure I'm working that knot down because I want it to be as tight up against those 11 O's as I can get. 
that gives it a better chance of being able to weave th back through to my um, weave back through my uh, slide slide class, my slide connector. I mean, I always call them a class, but they're not; they're connectors. <clears throat> and I'm just working my way over. I'm pushing that down. Okay. I'm going to move that one hand so you can see a little bit more what I'm doing. And I'm just pushing my two fingers down and pulling the thread with these two fingers to make sure my fingernails are above the knot, just so I can make sure and pull it as close to those 11s as possible, guys. Like I said. All right. Again, you're going to be careful with this. You don't want to warp anything. <laughs> oh, Mary, we're thrilled you're here. Thanks for joining us. All right, we're on our last knot here. And... I need to grab myself a little paper towel and move my beanie mat because me and GS Hypo have a um, di not difficult relationship, but just special relationship <laughs> where I always end up getting it all over everything. Let me grab a paper towel in your case. And again, I want to check these ends again before I finally glue everything and make sure I have everything where I want it. Yeah, Vaughn, you're right. Um, I do, it doesn't work for every loom project, but like you said, most of them, the uh, pulling the loops and and that, it, it works um, with most of them, though. So I'm just warming this GS Hypo up on my hand and it's getting a small bead on it. And I'm just going to make sure that I am covering that knot pretty darn good with this glue. And then just going to move on to the next and do the same thing. Okay. So I've got those pretty well covered. And this is a good tip, guys. Keep your tip of your GS Hypo right next to the paper towel as you're trying to put the end into it. Because you know how the globs always come out and you can't get the tip up in it? If you keep it against the paper towel, the paper towel will absorb the globs. And you can then easily get the top on without um, gluing your lid shut. And Vicki makes a good point. She says um, that the loop technique did not work with the suede lace that she used. So FYI on that, guys. So we're just going to let that dry for a couple minutes, for, you know, a few minutes at home. That's what you would do. But today, you know, we're live. So we're going to cut the knots. Or not the knots, excuse me, the thread above the knots, guys. And then just trim that. It's like so. And I'm going to go over to the other side. I'm going to move this paper towel so we can see better here. And I have one of my slide connectors. This is a 20 millimeter. So that will work on the project that we just did. And a lot of times, guys, I will take my pliers. Where's my um, chain nose? Here they are. I'll get my tweezer pliers. And I'll take my pliers, and I'm sure a lot of you do this, you seasoned pros. And I'll just stick that up in there and just try to kind of open the end up a little bit because it makes it a little easier to maneuver. And once you get it on, then it's no problem. But you kind of just start putting your seed beads in your knots. 
into your connector and just I rock it back and forth and it seems to really work to get the um, connector to go over top of everything. And then once you get to the end, we're going to pull that. And this is all done gently, guys. Don't be aggressive with your beautiful work because you don't want to end up messing it up right at this point or ever really, but especially at the end when you're finishing. And I'm just going to take my pliers here and that last knot, I'm just going to take the tip of my pliers and kind of just start it down into the end there. I want to pop in my last seed bead. Okay. Push that through. And again, I'm just going to take this and push this knot down in there a little bit. Like so. And then we're just going to close the end up. You have a finished end there. And we're going to do the same thing over here with our loops. And just open that end up. Oh, a little bit too much there. There we go. That's better. And we're just going to slide that on. That one goes on much easier because you don't have the knots to deal with. So it'll slide right across for you. And then just close that end. Okay. And there we go. All you have to do is add your clasp. And you have a finished piece. This one is not quite finished because I didn't put my loops on yet, but you get the meaning. But that is our beautiful, simple piece. I hope that helped you with a little bit of a refresher for everyone and also for any newbies out there. Kind of gives you basic Jolum 101. Let me get my camera turned around here, guys. Yes, Roberta, um, you would need to use a bigger loom to make that area or to make it longer. The uh, um, large Winsome Warrior is the, the way to go with that. You can make pretty much anything under the sun on that one. And here I go. I'm going to actually turn my camera here, guys. So there we go. So I hope you enjoyed that refresher. Thank you, Rose. Rose says, beautiful as always. Thank you. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. You're always here to support me. I appreciate it so much. Vicki says, great demo as usual. Lon says, beautiful, Trisha. Thanks for the refresher. Thank you. Thank you all for being here with us. Um, there would be no Jewel Loom without you all. So we love and appreciate all of you. And we love when you come and join us on our lives. It's a blast. So like I said, guys, next week, I'm going to do a fun project on the Boo Boo Loom. So stay tuned for that. If you are looking for any of the product products, <laughs> they are always in the link in the description. Um, and I think that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it. What was the approximate length of that? I make my bracelets six inches, and then I can account for a clasp. And I have a seven inch wrist. Okay. So you could actually, and I've seen this before I sign off here, guys. I've seen folks take these and use them as the middle of necklaces and maybe a choker or something and hook on chain or hook on sari silk. And then just put a focal on this piece. You could do up to, um, I believe, seven or eight inches on the uh, original loom. So you could do that. That's an option. You know, always options, guys. Always options. All right, guys. So I'm going to sign off for tonight. I'm going to go join the hubby and relax a little bit. Work on some more Christmas gifts. I hope you all are having a wonderful holiday season so far. Um, Tis the season. Let's. I'll be kind and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.